Welcome to Lit Capital's Sunday Setup. I'm your host, Covell. I hope you're all doing well. Before we get into this one, I just want to say a massive congratulations to the students that stayed with us throughout the start of this year. It's been a very pipalicious start to the year. Um, we've bagged a, a, a few thousand pips and we're ready now to really tackle February. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, please be sure to share this video if you find it valuable. Hit the button to subscribe and the bell for notifications so you can keep up to date with our future trades. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to log on to litcapital.co.uk. Um, we have a very user-friendly website. If you're new to the trading world, I would advise you to register for free so that you can get access to our education academy and you can go through our beginner's guide to Forex as well as downloading our free ebook. Um, if you're already a trader who wants to take your trading to the next level, then of course, heading over to our courses would be entirely for you and it would enable you to not only take your trading to the next level, but to get an insight to how we trade and to what we look for when we're looking at these charts. So today, me and Jacob are gonna go through some charts with you for our Sunday setup. We head straight into the market by looking at the dollar. Now, before I go any further, I would like to say it's very important that you guys pay attention to our Sunday setups, because you'll often find the setups we provide on a Sunday at some point do come into fruition throughout the week, which just means if you've watched the video, you'll be ahead of the game. If you haven't watched the Sunday setup, then unfortunately come, you know, maybe Wednesday or Thursday when the trade's playing out and we're providing the chart in our Discord channel, you may have already missed the setup because you hadn't set your alarm um, or your alerts, excuse me, um, in the first place, in the first instance. So, the week ahead, we do have um, a few hot topics. Um, off the top of my head, I know we've got the uh, Kiwi interest rate on Tuesday, on Wednesday, excuse me. Um, we have CPI from China. We've also got GDP throughout the whole week from UK and from the Euro. Um, from the Euro. And we also have the uh, Chairman Powell speaking on Wednesday as well as Tuesday. Um, so this pr it's a pretty big week in terms of economical news. We are looking at the GDP results as they are the main influences, as well as CPI from the dollar. So coming over to the chart on our last setup, um, we did go over, I went over, um, us looking at the dollar gaining strength to take out these equal highs. Now, if we go onto a daily chart, we can see that this liquidity was grabbed. Okay, so we can now remove that. And we can see that actually with price being so strong, we're not going to be looking to, to favor shorting this whilst price action is showing, uh, is showing us such a strong direction. Um, ultimately, we know with the coronavirus, um, as well as Trump's impeachment coming to an end. We understand that the, the US had a mixture of positive results mixed with negative. Um, but of course, due to other economical factors around the world, that's what's of course given uh, the US a slight advantage, which is why we've seen price not only come to grab this liquidity, clear the equal high, but also continue to push higher. Um, and now uh, we do know analysts and economists, um, they are favoring they are favoring uh, the dollar to go a lot higher. However, what we are looking for and what we've been anticipating is, is for price to come this high and to turn around to continue um, the formation down to grab these equal lows. So we will keep you up to date. We'll keep you informed. Um, at the moment, of course, as you know, coming into the market opening, we're never looking to take a trade. We just want to see how the market pans out. Um, so on Monday, we'll most likely sit on the sidelines unless we see something that really sticks out to us um, as it stands, you know, we could potentially, um, if I move this out of the way, we could potentially see price come as high. Do I think price would come as high as here to around the 100 region? Maybe, okay, maybe. But at the same time, what we do want to make sure, of course, is if price is coming this high, it's just really lining us up for a, a larger sell. Um, so we're going to keep our eyes on this from the weekly perspective. We can see that price still does have a long way to go in terms of moving higher. So from that, if I come outwards, we can see, okay, price does have a, a, um, a steeper route to the upside. 
before it would really look to say that it's cleared all positions above before coming down. But ultimately, after this very bullish weekly uh, past week that we've had, we are looking to see price turn around um, and continue to make a formation downwards. Um, but of course, we'll keep you guys up to date and we shall move on. <clears throat> AUDJPY. Now, this has been a really, really good trade. Um, a lot of you have been with us for quite some time now. You remember I gave out this trade um, on the 15th of October, or probably prior to the 15th of October. Uh, we gave this out in our Telegram channel and to our students. And, you know, we can happily say that now, um, you know, it's probably been for quite some time now. I haven't really given you guys a good update, but we, we can see that, um, you know, our, our take profit of 464 pips was reached. Um, if we go into smaller time frames, we also, and I also have to hold my hands up. Now I had um, a family grievance over the past weekend. So it meant that I missed Sunday setups call. Jacob and Adam took the call. And unfortunately this move here, I had my alert set for, but unfortunately due to other circumstances, I was away, um, which just meant I wasn't able to give you guys this, this perfect trade, which I've also missed as well. Um, so we missed this move, but of course now looking at the picture, we can see there is imbalance beneath as well as imbalance above on the four hour. And from that being said, with the coronavirus, what you should all know is the coronavirus equals a weak Aussie. Okay, Australia have a lot of trade connections with China, so it, you know if there's one economy right now that can be massively uh, implicated it can be China just for the simple fact that you know they've got a lot more ties with them as opposed to the euro um, and the US for example um, so with that being said and of course with the Aussie being somewhat of a sister to the Kiwi it just means if the Aussie is failing we can bet our bottom dollars that the Kiwi is soon to follow suit as well so with that being said, we are looking to see a continuation downwards however we do have imbalance to the upside. Um, and of course, we've got equal highs to the upside. We can see here that a structure was broken, which has turned it potentially into bullish. So we do want to see price actually come up. But the question is now, is this global uh, pandemic going to keep, um, you know, is this going to keep, is this going to keep the, the Aussie weak? And realistically, you know, this coronavirus doesn't seem like it's going away anytime soon. So we can't really have strong, you know, big hopes to see, um, to see the Aussie increase. I mean, realistically, this is looking like a 400 pip move back upwards. So, you know, to see that happen right now, unless something else changes, I, I can't see how that's really going to, um, going to happen. However, of course, as well as the Aussies, as well as the Aussie is affected, um, so is the yen. So it's, it's going to be an interesting week for sure. <clears throat> we want to see if the banks are going to continue to have trust within the yen or if they're not. Um, and of course, the Chinese economy is slowing down. So as soon as we start to see some results, really, the data is really going to show us what the picture is to be. Um, at the moment, we could just look for the price to come up, feel the imbalance before it comes down. So with that being said, we're going to wait to see what happens on market open. Um, the higher trade setup that I've got is from this area. There is a, there's imbalance beneath on a monthly, but also there's a mitigation zone here. Um, on a smaller time frame, I think it's the daily. So with that being said, you know, we, we do ultimately want to see price come lower. Um, but if price goes up first before it comes down, then so be it. But ultimately, we're wanting price to come around as close to this 88% area as possible before we can, um, you know, have, have a higher confidence to believe that price can go long. Last one from me is Euro NZD. Now, we've got the Euro GDP coming out on Friday. We've got, you know, Pound, we've got Germany. Uh, well, excuse me. Um, <laughs> uh, Britain has left EU now, so we're no longer a part of them. So we've got our own GDP coming out, I uh, believe, Monday. But um, more importantly, the Euro has their, has their GDP results towards the latter end of the week. So that means, really, we might see price stall throughout the week. Um, and not really see any strong move. We've had a very bullish uh, weekly candle here, which kind of shows us that price is still pushing to the upside. And if that's the case, we had uh, potentially written out this trade here. Uh, sorry, should I say mapped out this trade? But just in regards to what I'm looking at right now, and of course, you know, the 
uh, Kiwi has their interest rate coming out on Wednesday morning at 1 a.m. Their interest rate is forecasted to remain the same. So if the interest rate does remain the same, we should be looking at a weaker Kiwi. So if we're looking at a weaker Kiwi, that would mean price should continue to soar higher with your NZD. So for that reason, what I'm not going to do is have an alert and have a trade here and just take the trade based on price actually hitting uh, my alert. What I'm going to do is reanalyze what happens come Monday when we start to see some more data. And of course, into Tuesday, I will also be looking at what's happening because we're not really seeing positive signs from the euro either. Germany, which is the biggest economy. If you guys haven't already, um, check out our, our Pip Talk podcast. Uh, we went into great detail on elaborating on what's happening around the world and how this is financially affecting the markets. Um, and Germany is the euro's biggest economy and they're looking to slow down right now massively. Uh, so they're on the brinks of a financial crisis. So if that is the case, we can't really be too um, optimistic about, you know, um, Euro creating newer highs um, against the Kiwi anyway, because we've got a lot of areas to the downside that eventually we do want to see hit. Um, so, yeah, so that's me for the week. I'll keep you guys informed. Prices could come a bit higher before they look to come down. But ultimately, if we are looking on a smaller time frame, this equal high here is what I'm looking to be taken out and then price to really come down uh, to clear these lows beneath. So I'll keep you guys informed, updated. If you're not already in the Discord channel, it's the best place to be as we will provide you with our charts and of course with our trades. That's me, done, over to you, Jay. Thank you, Val, appreciate it, man. Welcome guys, hope you guys are doing good. I'm just going to run you through some things I'm looking at in the market for this week. Um, I'm going to start with EURUSD. So for those that were um, trading with us in the Discord on Friday on the NFP day, uh, we had some great setups. We also had some setups that didn't do what we wanted them to do in regards to uh, little to no movement, and EURUSD was one of them. So we actually had uh, a zone marked up in our Discord. So uh, if we go to the four-hour... Uh, we wanted price to spike into this zone before actually uh, maybe shooting up for a buy. So price hasn't actually taken out this area, but um, I will be considering what price is looking like when we get into this zone. So um, as we didn't actually get what we wanted on Friday, um, it's kind of not invalidated the trade for me, but judging by the higher time frame um, showing, we could actually get you know, this whole area wiped out. So I'm not too, too scared. I'm not, I'm, I'm a bit skeptical on it. So I'm still going to look at it to see where it is because price structure hasn't actually broken in regards to, um, you know, this pride, this, this uh, trade being invalid yet. But if we don't get the play off of this zone, then yeah, I do expect further bearish movement because the Euro USD on the higher time frame is showing that it needs to continue down. But, that being said, you know, we could get a retracement on the DXY um, with Cavell showing you what exactly could be happening there. It has been showing bullishness, but we could see a, a pullback of some sort. So definitely keep your eye on this. I will be updating this in the Discord as well. Um, but yeah, we do have reasons for it to, to, to react here with imbalances and stuff. So definitely keep an eye on this. Price hasn't actually uh, done anything from... NFP actually just continued down, but, you know, wasn't really worth a trade getting into. So we left it alone and uh, we focused on a few other things. So uh, one thing that I did give out or we did actually look for was US 30. So I don't regularly trade this, but just by judging the structure, we sort of understood that, you know, we could, we could be in line for a sell. So what we actually saw was on the daily time frame, price did make a new higher high here. So we could anticipate, you know, a retracement happening. So we are currently in a sell um, and, you know, hoping to actually get maybe some of this daily imbalance filled uh, before continuing higher. So definitely uh, look, if you didn't catch the sell already, definitely look for a retracement uh, in these buy zone areas. So this is the first area that's, uh, you know, met my eyes. So when price 
gets down here, I'll probably be looking to take most of my position out of the cell. Um, and if that one uh, doesn't hold up, then on the daily, we could actually get, it's a big ask, but at the same time, we could get this double bottom swept and we could actually play into this candle here, which is uh, also a point of interest as it has some imbalance next to it. So that would be a great trade for us. Um, you know, a lot of pips there, but just by judging by structure, um, we can't overrule the fact that, you know, it doesn't have to take out this, this, this equal low that has actually been made. Um, at some stage, it probably will come for it, but whether we get it this week, I'm not too sure. So, you know, definite areas to look out for. On the four hour, we have a, a, a highlighted area here, so I will be updating in regards to maybe a buy entry also. Um, but we'll have to just wait and see. Um, as you know, US 30 is a stock, it's not quite, it doesn't quite move as currencies do, so just be a bit wary of that. Um, and also, I'm going to take a look at gold for you guys. So NFP gold was brilliant. Um, for those that don't really trade the news, then, you know, it's, it's quite high volatility. So if you don't know what you're doing, um, we would, you know, we recommend sitting it out. It's not the best. So what we actually saw with this spike here, um, me, Cavell, and a few others, we were actually trading this live. So we could actually see that, you know, liquidity was just sitting below here. Um, so once we saw the dip when the, when the news result came out, uh, we actually bought it up. So our actual overall uh, target, we would like to see a new high being made on gold. Um, whether we get it this week, I'm not too sure. It does depend on uh, the DXY as well, if that wants to continue its bullish streak. Um, or it could reverse in regards to those areas that Cavell mentioned as well. Um, but overall, on the higher time frame, you know, it does have reason to at least get back to the, the highlighted area. If I go on my two hour, we have an imbalance here. So that would be my first take profit area, uh, if I'm honest, in regards to gold. So it does have a fair way to go. So hopefully we do get that push up. Um, and in that would actually entail US 30 continuing down also. So definitely keep an eye on gold for sure in regards to uh, what it does in this area when it, if it, if and when it does get up here, as you know, we could potentially get short down. As I don't think on the higher time frame, uh, we, we've fully done the correction needed. Um, I could be wrong, but you know, just from this, this expansion move we got, we haven't really got any correction as of yet. So we could get another expansion maybe before the correction. Um, that, that's a possibility too. I would like to see price maybe come down a little bit lower. So I will be watching this area um, in regards to, yeah, if we do get another push lower as well. And uh, I will be looking at pound USD, but I don't have a setup for you guys as of yet. I'm kind of letting it do its thing. Um, as you can see with the pound US as well, we did get that higher, higher here made which broke to uh bullish for me so this was always needed in regards to a correction this does not mean it's bearish in my opinion because uh the correction is still necessary on the higher time frame so i don't have a full point area of interest like this candle does you know i am looking at it for a little bit but in regards to actual points of interest i don't have one as of yet so when the picture becomes a bit clearer in regards to maybe what the DXY is doing, um, we do have that GDP news, as Cavell mentioned as well. So just to see how price is looking and, and, and you know, the, the, the formations are, are, are setting up at specific times tomorrow, we might just sit out on regard, in regards to the pound as we don't have a clear um picture in regards to buyers i am only looking at buyers for the pound as the overall higher structure is bearish but we can get um you know a great correction down before continuing but i am in favor of uh waiting on the buy and playing other setups that i have my eye on in regards to um not forcing a counter trend because unless you got up you know within these areas here um, it's a bit risky to go against what the overall trend is. So 
I'm going to keep an eye on this and keep guys updated as and when we get um, what we are looking for in our setups or, or areas that have been met. So just keep your eyes on that, guys, basically. So that's all we have for this week's market, market outlook. Um, I hope you guys are, you know, doing your, your back testing and stuff like that with, with the charts and uh, some of the things we're showing you. I hope you guys are going away with it and actually putting in the hours that you need to put in in order for you to have a, a, a better understanding as well. Um, but yeah, we'll be sure to update you midweek for sure with, a, with another pit tour. So stay blessed and remember, every day is money day.